Do you want to make color management inside of DaVinci Resolve really, really easy? I'm going to show you exactly how to do that in this short video. But before I do, this video is brought to you by myself and my new DaVinci Resolve course. Details for that are in the link in the description. The majority of modern cameras have the ability to shoot in what's called a log format. And if you're not familiar, log is just a grayscale format that the camera records in to increase the overall dynamic range of the image. One of the problems with doing this though is that once you bring it into your video editor of choice, it looks very grayscale. And I'll show you what that looks like. I recorded these, I recorded this footage, and you can tell that it's desaturated, it's very grayscale, and it needs converted into the proper color space. So I'm going to show you how to do that inside of DaVinci Resolve. And there's a manual way to do it, or there's a much more automated way to do it. And I'm going to show you how to do it in a more quickly and automated way. This is so you can save time and edit quickly inside of DaVinci Resolve and get your projects turned around without having to fiddle with a bunch of different settings or LUTs or different things like that. The first thing we're actually going to do before we do anything with our footage is we're going to go to the settings inside of DaVinci Resolve project settings. Then you're going to want to go to color management. Inside here, we're going to choose color science of DaVinci YRGB color managed. After that, we're going to select HDR DaVinci wide gamut intermediate. And it has a little snippet here as to the definition of what that means. It's an extra wide gamut log grading environment suitable for SDR and HDR deliverables. Preserves maximum image fidelity and highlight detail. So basically what this is telling us is it's not constraining us to any sort of color space. It's opening up to one of the biggest uh, basically color spaces, color, you know, wide color gamut. And additionally, it's also an HDR color grading environment, meaning that we have the ability to uh, really, really uh, play with our highlights without having them clip. After we set up those two things, we're going to go ahead and set output color space to Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. This is just what's being displayed to us inside of DaVinci Resolve. Once we tell DaVinci Resolve uh, what the gamma and color mode are for the clips. So once you have that set up, you're going to go ahead and hit save. Now I already have that set up on mine. So I'm going to just go ahead and hit cancel. Once I've done that, I'm going to select my clips, right click and go to input color space. Again, this is just telling DaVinci Resolve what color space these were filmed in, what gamma and color space they were filmed in. So it knows how to convert it into that DaVinci Resolve YRGB HDR intermediate. So we're going to tell it that it's a Sony uh, A7. So it's from an A7S3, but it was specifically filmed in S uh, S gamut 3 dot cine S log three. So that's really important to know because if you don't get that right, then it's going to uh, mess up the color space conversion. It's going to do something wonky with it. So you want to make sure that you know what the footage was filmed in before you select the proper gamma and color space. But I know that it was S gamut three dot cine slash S log three. And as soon as I do that, it's going to convert it to rec 709 right out the gate. So if I just double click on a clip, now you can see that these have been converted beautifully and they look great. Uh, this one was a little overexposed, uh, but again, that's the beauty of S log. If you go just a little bit overexposed by mistake, uh, often you can recover those highlights because you recorded it in a log format. But by doing this, this is just telling DaVinci Resolve to display it to us saying like, hey, it was filmed in this color space and this gamma, but now you can display it to us as if it were like a Rec. 709 clip while maintaining all the original detail without having to pre-bake it into the actual clip. Once I've done that, uh, the next thing I'll do, and this isn't related to color space, but it's a nice to know, I'm going to select all the clips again, right click, and I'm going to do clip attributes. Now, my timeline is set to 23.976 or essentially 24 frames per second. So I'm going to interpolate all of this footage into 23.976 or 24 frames per second. I'm going to select that and hit OK. Now what that's going to do is that's going to stretch all my footage so it doesn't play back in real time. It plays back in the frame rate that my timeline is in. It's going to stretch it all out. This was all filmed at 120 frames per second. So now you can see that when I play it back, it is indeed slowed down beautifully. And that's pretty much it. Once I have that set up inside of DaVinci Resolve, all I have to do is right click on my clips and tell DaVinci Resolve what the input color space or 
how they were recorded and it's going to do all the work for me to convert it into rec 709 essentially rec 709 it's converting it into the color space that you're viewing on your timeline which is the davinci resolve yrgb intermediate like the wide gamut but it'll display it to you essentially in rec 709 and then when you go to the color tab you'll be working inside of that enormous color space so you can see here that once it's been converted into that that uh that the timeline color space is displaying it to me in rec 709 i can see here on my color warper that the colors barely extend out farther than 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 over here versus if i would have made my timeline color space rec 709 and then just converted it to rec 709 that way then the colors would have reached all the way to the end and they would clip sooner along with you know the, the different aspects of the image like the highlights so thanks again for watching comment down below what cameras are you working with and how long have you been using davinci resolve did you know about this feature i would love to hear your feedback in the comments and as another reminder before you go i do have my davinci resolve course coming up the link is in the description to sign up for that once it's officially launched i'm really excited about it so if you want to learn how to use davinci resolve quickly and effectively and learn the the basics of the edit in the color tab so that you can pump out projects very very quickly be sure to sign up for that but until then i'll see you in the next video